Good evening friends, so we are here again and we will discuss the questions that we had put up for especially the undergraduates and I must begin by saying that I am truly impressed by some of the answers coming through. Rishabh's answers are very apt on the dot. Keep it up. Now, a couple of more people have tried answering, including one from Sanket. It's a beautifully answered question. But there are a few lacunae which we'll cover up. And don't be intimidated by a couple of interns who have all been my students and you have all included them in the, in the group. They've been taught uh, by me in their clinics. So there'll be a few things that'll come through, but don't bother about it. You answer your way. And I don't think you should uh, ever be concerned as to, you know, I mean, these interns are also undergraduate students as far as I'm concerned. But naturally, they've got an advantage of a year of learning surgery from me and otherwise also learning surgery and reading. So there can be some bit of, uh, I can understand some answering by Naveen especially is uh, pretty good. Although it can get better, at places he's wrong also. So mostly has done well. Most of you have done well. I'm pretty happy the way it has gone so far. And I hope you're enjoying it as much as we are enjoying it. And uh, a lot of uh, effort is involved in putting them together. And the credit goes to Sukriti for putting them all regularly on time for all of you. So make the most of it while it is happening. Now the first case that we would discuss is the one where we had had this 30-year-old gentleman. A 30-year gentleman where we did not give you much of a history because that was more of a spotter. And uh, the first answer that I got was uh, from Rishabh. And I think it came within 10 minutes. So shows that somebody has been in the clinics regularly. Now, what did I show there? There was a translimination test being done. And it was specially pointed uh, that testes are differently, separately palpable. That was a good enough hint, actually, if you really look at it. How do you differentiate scrotal swelling from an inguinal slash inguinal scrotal swelling. Well, first of all, when I'm saying always, I mean it. Always examine any patient Always examine uh, any patient with an inguinal swelling or any hernia anywhere in the body. I mean, abdominal hernias also can be ventral hernias standing first. This could well become a reason for somebody passing and not passing in an exam. It's taken so seriously because this becomes the basis of an understanding of whether it is a scrotal or an inguinal scrotal swelling. Now, a swelling that is confined to the inguinal region, the cord coming down here, test is being here too. Now, this is the swelling. If it is confined to the inguinal region and the person is standing, naturally, you cannot get a bow. You can't get above the swelling naturally because it is coming from above. On in standing position, it fills from above. This explains this, and this explains this. Number three. You can feel the testis or palpate it separately. Naturally, then there are, if it's a hernia, you have various other tests, you can do a cuff impulse. So you will see the impulse 
in the inguinal region. So broadly, this is why we should examine them in a standing position. Now, if you are, uh, just to indicate a few things. Now, if the swelling descends down further, you cannot even feel the cord separately. So, first of all, examine them in a standing position. It will fill from above. You can't get above the swelling. You can feel the testis and also cord. You cannot feel the cord separately, but you can feel the testis separately. You can palpate it or see it separately. And especially for swellings like hernia, inguinal hernia, you can also look for the cuff impulse. But you can have varicocele, you can have some lymphocele, other swellings which are going down to the inguinal, inguinal, from inguinal region to inguinal scrotal region. So this can be one way to look at it. So if I was to say conversely, therefore, a scrotal swelling, you can get about naturally because it is testis is here. Most swelling will have something to do with the testis. So this is the testis and you can easily get above. Suppose this is tunica vaginalis, which is full of fluid, hydrocele. You can get above it. You can feel the cord separately. Fills from below up. But the important thing is you can feel the cord separately. You can feel the testis separately. Now this itself becomes a reason, especially this, to examine this patient in a standing position and once you find these features, I'm repeating, you can get above the swelling, it fills from below, you can feel the cord separately, you can feel the testis separately. The only exception is based on the understanding of the f development of testis and tunica. And that is an sister hydrocele of cord. I'll explain to you what it is actually. Now when the testis is developing, it drags along with it it's pulled by gubernaculum, but it keeps pushing the peritoneal fold along because it is coming from retroperitoneum. And then it comes down. This is the deep ring or the only ring at, in, the, in, the, in, a, in an infant because you don't have an inguinal canal in infants. You don't have a proper canal. You will have a, only one ring. Now pay attention here. So what does it actually do? This is the testis and you have the fold of peritoneum that comes along and we call it processus vaginalis. Easy to understand and what is pulling it is gubernaculum. So this is when if it goes in the normal direction, it will get down into the Now, if it goes in the normal channel, it reaches the scrotum and it is still covered by process of the channel, which is continuous, then it starts obliterating here. Normally, what will happen? Just a part, I'm sorry, this side. The testis is here. So, the whole process of vaginalis was here, continuous, you can see that. Then it obliterates around it, obliterates here, right up to the deep ring. 
that's how cord tunica vaginalis develop. This is testis. All right, just to simplify it for you. This, this is what should happen normally. This is a normal scenario. So you have tunica vaginalis and that is peritoneum. So this is normal. But if it doesn't happen, various things can be found. That is, I'll give you various scenarios. It remains patent. Right? So it has remained patent, it's communicating with the peritoneal cavity. A lot of people call it congenital hydrocele, but the correct terminologies, I mean, when you hear of this, don't just uh, get confused. When they say congenital hydrocele, they talk about basically what we call as triple PV, which is Persistent, patent, processes, vaginless. Now, depending upon the content, it can be a hydrocele, it can even be a hernia, which earlier we used to call it congenital hydrocele, congenital hernia. So, if somebody was to ask you what is the management of congenital hydrocele, some of you get this question in the exam. For both the answer is hernia to me. Because it is here that you need to block it. That's it. While it sounds absurd, because therefore the right term is the first one I'm writing is triple P V. Remember that. Common mistake. And your books won't generally be talking all this. So pay attention. Treatment is herniotomy. So, what is the treatment of congenital hydrocele? Herniotomy. What's the treatment of congenital hernia? Herniotomy. Now, how do you clinically differentiate the two? How do you differentiate between congenital hydrocele and congenital hernia? Promptly you will reply, which you have not, we have not asked. You will all jump and reply, transillumination, which you are seeing in this picture also, right? So you do transillumination to differentiate between congenital hydrocele, congenital hernia, and that will be a wrong answer. Do you know why that even hernias, reason is hernias also, I mean the bowel is so thin, And it has got fluid in it. They are also transluminant. So, translumination would be a false test in a congenital hydrocele or what we should call now patent persistent processes vaginalis. Now comes the how do you therefore differentiate? You do what is called the Inverted ink pot sign. What is that? I don't know whether you see those ink pots anymore. They used to be like this in the past, if you see them in some archives anymore. They're full of liquid, and the other one is full of sand. They used to have a narrow opening only. This is sand. If you invert it, that is you put it upside down. This will empty faster. You have seen those hourglass 
uh, kept these days essentially for demonstration purposes only. The liquid will take longer. So what do we do? Longer. I uh, just wanted to show that. It will come one drop at a time. The sand will just pour out faster. So what do we do? What is this inverted ink pot sign? If you lift up the scrotum, if it empties faster, it's a hernia. That is, there are contents which are solid. If it is slower, it is water. So, hydrocele. I hope you can read what I write because I can't really make a handwriting change. Most of my students understand it. I'm reading, writing it again. So that's inverted ink pot sign and one situation handle. This was that situation that I was referring to persistent patent processes vaginalis or triple PEV. Right? The next situation, therefore, I thought I'll take a detour and finish it all for you so that you can understand in continuation only because one understands in relation to each other. Now, the other option is it is patent till here and you have fluid here too. So, that is looking like funnel. So, we call it funicular. Hydro sealed. You can mention it if you're asked. Rare scenarios. Third is it is obliterated at the deep ring, but patent right across up to the superficial ring. Do you know what we call it? This is the cord inguinal region. Infantile. It's a scrotal swelling which is extending up to the superficial lingual ring, so not up to deep ring. This was up to the deep ring. That's a deep ring. That is triple PV. And then in between you have the funicular type, which looks like you can have sac right till here and here. And then you have an infantile hadoseed. And one more variety, therefore, it can remain like this. This is the testis. This is the tunica vaginalis. And somewhere in the middle, a part remains patent and rest is fine. Now, this will be the this would be the insisted hydrocele of the cord. which is kind of a paradox one can get above testis can be felt separately and cord also can be felt separately. And of course, fluid anywhere, transformation would be positive. When doing transformation, always throw the light from the side. That's the, and always fix the swelling. So in this case, you can feel the testis is separate. And sometimes you also have epidermal cyst, which can be almost also on the same line. Now, transplantation would be positive. Classically, the case that you have seen. Clear? Now, so, to sum it up, the only swelling that is scrotal 
but testis is separately felt and cysted hydrocele of cord. I'll add only trans illuminant swelling that is one it is scrotal it has all the features you can get above it you can feel the testis separately right that's the testis being separately felt and that's that is the cyst So classically, a scrotal swelling, but with features which are slightly different. So paradoxically, that is what it is. Another such swelling is epidermal cyst, as I mentioned. But there, it's too close for comfort to test this. So when you're doing transillumination, always uh, fix the swelling. Throw the light from either sides, not from above. Always fix. So if I have to do transillumination, what is necessary? We'll probably share some video of how rightly, how correctly you should do. Uh, when you are doing translumination, the first thing is fix the swelling, then light from sides and it is an inspectory finding. That is what this case was. So this was a case of and cysted hydrocele of cord. Perfectly fine to do clinical. You can rarely also get, I mean, I'm just trying to make it easier for you so that you don't run into people who talk about some strange cases. It can also be a lymphocele, but these are not common. So important, less important, less lesser even. So these are all scrotal swellings which you can actually sum up. So I am starting with say encysted hydrocele of cord, which is the most common one, then the epidermal cyst and also spermatocele, etc. That is just to add the list, add to the list, right? And uh, if you have varicocele which is coming down, then you do what is called as a bow sign is tested. When you bow forward, uh, the varicocele would reduce because of the uh, uh, I mean the drainage of the veins into the abdominal cavity. We'll discuss varicocele separately, but this was important to understand. So it's a clinical diagnosis. You don't need too many investigations, but if you do an uh, ultrasound anywhere is right because I have taught you last time also ultrasound is an extension of clinical examination. So we'll have an ultrasound that is to rule out some other problems. He's a young man. Uh, and may not be even subjected to any therapy, the treatment may not be required if asymptomatic. And usually what is their symptom? They, they, they can feel the swelling, so that is one reason why they come. And the other is there can be a dragging sensation if it is get, getting, uh, if it is increasing in size. So, what will we do? It's like any other hydrocele. We'll just open it up, get the fluid out and don't use terms like jabule or the, uh, there would be at least 15 names that you would have to remember. So best answer all the time is eversion of sac in all cases. In a primary vaginal hydrocele also it will be right. Now what would be a primary vaginal hydrocele? I'll just complete the list which is, uh, so I'll, I'll write it again. This is the first one. The sac remaining patent, write down. Triple P, V, or congenital hydrocele or congenital hernia. The next is funicular. And here we, we do the uh, inverted ink pot sign. I think I already explained it. 
test okay uh, third is you may have everything fine this is the deep ring deep ring is here and you have it in the middle that some part remains this is testis here that's tunica vaginalis and that's the encysted hydrocele of the cord and finally everything is fine everything is okay this is the testis and this is where the fluid collects that's why we call it the vaginal hydrocele vaginal hydrocele can be primary or secondary how does it actually develop there are two surfaces that I would want you to remember one is a surface that secretes I'll mark it with red and the other is a surface that absorbs so this produces fluid which we need for protective buffering action on the testis and so that there is no excess of this fluid the absorptive surface takes care of it absorbs it so what can be the pathology increased production or secretion and reduced absorption or both so when we know the cause we call it secondary and for you it is easy to remember if you take a tumor tuberculosis trauma all these but they can be infections which can be bacterial they can even be parasites that is filariasis so bacterial filarial etc I'm not getting to the depth of it it can even be viral say in mumps it can even be spiroketal syphilis the spirochete right and when you don't have a cause conventionally we call it as primary although it will have a cause and a lot of people feel that even here there is a filarial element but you cannot establish it that's primary and secondary and the diagnosis is based, based on clinical features as I have described clinically it will be a scrotal swelling what is a scrotal swelling swelling that is confined to the scrotum you can get above the swelling you can feel the cord separately and importantly you cannot feel the testis separately diagnosis is mostly clinical but sometimes say if it occurs in 30s or and it's a rapid increase and you're suspecting a tumor then you need to do an ultrasound we'll discuss this separately when we'll talk of testicular tumor and it will allow you to know if there is any change in the eco texture etc and then you can proceed further so it would vary what you need to do but most of the time this that's a treatment and when it is primary vaginal hydrocele the most common one that you're going to get the answer is you confirm by translimination it is a scrotal swelling and manage it by eversion of sac for those who want to hear more about it there's a lord's ply plication which is done only for smaller hydrocele's and what do we do there rest is very simple I mean I, I think I was explaining it here when I got into this now this produces this absorbs and if you really want to have a that's the testis complete cure then we evert it eversion takes the 
two away from each other, two surfaces, that is secretory and absorptive. They get separated from each other. They, it's like what was done to Jarasan. You cut through this and you evert it. When you evert it, they start, get, the fluid gets, when it is produced, it gets drained by the lymphatic. So that is how you get a cure. So when you're talking about Lord's plication or Jabolay's procedure, they're basically just relative terms. Essentially, it's a version of sac. In a Lord's plication, you just keep cutting through the sac. Finally, you push the testis out. And when the testis is out like this, the sac is like this. We take a running continuous suture right up to here, hold it. And we do it all around. So when you tie it, it becomes like a flower. Achieves the same thing, but it's generally done in very really small hydro seals. The best answer is open it and evert. So that will take care of it. I mean, that's about this case. So it was the case of insisted hydro seal of cord uh, for the reasons I just described. It's a scrotal swelling, the only one which is transluminant, classical transluminant swelling where the testis can be felt separately. And that's exactly what I think Rishabh answered in five minutes. I think that was a very good answer. Quickly, just get to the, just stick to the basics. Don't try to complicate some of the question answers and the, the coming answers I would discuss that they've been made complicated unnecessarily.